Conference, your source for JVM knowledge. Okay, so we are going to start. Uh, first, I would like to make some questions to the audience. So, how many people here is publishing apps on Google Play by his own? Okay, three. The other people, I suppose you are working for a company that develops Android apps and publishes them. Okay, so uh, originally this, this, this speech this speak, but it was about making a living on Google Play, but uh, Sergio commented that he wanted to make uh, Android tracking grid, so I accepted to make it. And later on Christmas, I have uh, a problem with Google Play, so I kind of modified this, this speak and add, add this, this tale uh, and other horror histories. You will see it at the, at the end. Why? So I am Pablo Martinez. I am developing apps uh, since two, 2009. Uh, I run Nobody's My Own Company, but it's, it's not, it has been a long journey. Uh, probably the first question we are talking about Google Play and revenues is, is it actually possible to, to make a living on Google Play? Uh, well, there are not much information on the internet about, about the revenues, but I have been able to find this this from uh, Inmobi. Inmobi is a company that uh, makes uh, mobile advertisement like AdMob. And they make a survey between their customers. So as you can see, uh, uh, about 87% 80, of the people make less than 1,000 euros a month. And only the 9% of of them were able to make uh, more than 1,000 euros, and if we were going higher, just a 3%, uh, more than $10,000. Uh, so uh, we could say it's not really easy to, to make a living actually on Google Pay. If, if you are living with your parents, probably with less than 1,000 euros, you, you are happy. But if you have you have to, to live alone in your own home with your family, etc. is not enough. Uh, happily, I can say that I'm part of this 9%, so I can make a living on Google Play. Uh, um, uh, when I say that, many people say, hey, Pablo, you're a lucky guy. Uh, you are living on Google Play. Uh, but what I think at this moment is, is I, I like this quote by Coleman, is I am great really very luck. The harder I work, the more I, <laughs> I seem to have. And what I actually answer is uh, getting successful developing apps is rather a marathon of sustained work than a matter of being lucky. Uh, I, I'm not uh, making a living on Google Play since day one. Uh, it took me a, a long time. So I'm going to explain a bit how I get there. Uh, I graduated in 2009, 10 years ago, as an industrial engineer, specialized in electri electricity and electronics. So I I'm not a computer science. I'm not a software engineer. I, I, I knew how to program. I, I was used to program in language C microcontrollers. So uh, this, this, this is my background. And later on, I switched my, my careers. Uh, 2009 was not the best moment in, in Spain, nor in Zaragoza, my hometown, nor probably in Europe or the whole world. Uh, so uh, when I was studying in Zaragoza, I have been told uh, many times, don't worry, before you end your degree, you will get a job here in Zaragoza. But that didn't happen at this time. So. Uh, I got an offer as a PCB designer, uh, uh, this kind of boards, printed circuit boards, uh, for a traffic control system in Madrid. So I had to move, and I, um, and I leave my hometown. I moved to Zaragoza, sorry, to Madrid. Uh, getting this job and moving to Madrid uh, made me learn about, uh, about tackling about pu public transit. 
Uh, public transit in a big city like uh, Madrid is not like Zaragoza. In Zaragoza, you just go walk into places, you just get a bus, it's enough. In Madrid, I actually was working in Torrejón de Ardot, it's a city in the suburbs, so I had to take uh, two metro lines and one third Carnian train to get there. Um, I had to say, while metro, metro maps and metro networks are uh, more or less well designed uh, uh, for cercanías. The kind of uh, signs they use are, uh, are a bit confuse, confuse, confusing for foreigners. And so this uh, mix of events uh, started to tower me to my, to my Android career. Uh, because at the very same time, uh, I heard the first news about a Google mobile o operating system that allowed to create apps and publish. It, it was like, like, like the same as um, uh, Apple did with the iPhone, but it sounded more developer friendly to me. Uh, so the very same year, in 2009, at Christmas, I gave myself a self-Christmas present. It was this, this LG Flipboard phone. Uh, I have to say it was terrible because the screen was those so-called resistive. So they resisted to touches, actually. And, and I started to, to try to, to build an app. And as I had problems with public transit, I, I thought, well, uh, let's do just a stupid app that has a embedded uh, uh, metro map, just just for for fun and just for for me because I, I was going to use it. So the first problem I I had is was is that uh, I was a C programmer. I had no idea about object oriented. Uh, programming, nor Java, nor the Android fr framework. So uh, I started to learn it by myself uh, late at night. So just early 2010, I figured how to, to make this, this, this first app, and I decided to, to publish it. Uh, if you remember, at uh, those times, all apps were like uh, something, Android, uh, the icons were droids, the, the colors were mainly green, it was really awful, and there were no ads. So the only way to make money with uh, an app was to, to sell it. So I decided to put it with typical 099 price tag. So let's see some of the screens of my first apps. I know they... They look terrible today. Uh, actually, if you look at the first one, the name of the first app was Metro de Madrid. Later, I, I discovered how to improve uh, naming and make it more uh, uh, search friendly. So I finally changed the name to Madrid Metro Cercanías. Uh, many people still think it's an awful name, but it's great for discoverability in the market. So I keep it. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, I just sold one, two, three apps a month, so I made I made less than ten euros a month. It was like uh, just useless as a make as a way of making money. But something changed uh, changed uh, really fast. Um, Google acquired AdMob at the end of uh, 2009. So in 2010, we were able to start to make money with, with ads. So that meant you could publish a free app for everybody and, and put a small banner at the bottom or at the top or whatever. So then I, from, from one, two, three downloads a month, uh, suddenly I started to go to 100 downloads a day thousands of dollars a month. It was incredible. And as you can imagine, uh, uh, I, will, I was able to get much more money with ads than with the, the paid version of the, of the application. Uh, 
I kept uh, update, updating and adding new features during three years until 2012. I started to 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 make a uh, to, to become really a, an Android developer uh, as a hobby. And then a moment came in 2013 where I I had to took a decision. Uh, I met in a developer conference a recruiter from Samsung, and he offered me to to switch careers and become uh, a software engineer. I was a bit afraid because, uh, as I told before, I was a I consider and consider myself at that time a electronic engineer. I was more used to to make circuits than to 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 make software. Um, and there were more things to take in account because if I accepted the the offer from Samsung, I had to stop uh, developing Android apps uh, as a hobby and also uh, being part of software on open of open source software, uh, contributing to GitHub because due to, to intellectual property uh, intellectual property issues with uh, Samsung, you cannot do nothing outside Samsung. So uh, at, that, at that time, I make some hundreds of euros with my apps. So I tried to sell them, and nobody wanted to, to, to buy my apps. I contacted many software companies, big, small. All of them told me, uh, I'm not going to buy your app. I, I can make a clone and, and do the same. So finally, what I what I did is uh, I had a friend, also a software engineer, uh, and I proposed him to to like to borrow uh, my apps to him. He will be able to to update them, get the money, and so on. But if I left Samsung in the future. Uh, I will get my code back, and we will think about doing something together. So we agreed that. So finally, I, I accepted the the position at Samsung, and I switched career. I I never wrote again a printed uh, circuit board, and uh, I I not regret it. Right. Today I can say that I not regret it. Uh, my experience at Samsung was incredible. I was able to, to learn a lot. I met a lot of engineers. I traveled to, to many places in the world. I, I, I work in Seoul, in San Francisco, Berlin, Warsaw. Uh, I cannot say much about what I did there because I was part of the R&D team. So we are not able to speak about what we did. But we, we did some uh, things related with uh, smart watches at, the, at those times. The first uh, watches were in the market, um, and I also worked a lot on the security part. Uh, if you have uh, Samsung phones, uh, you probably have seen that there is a, something called Nox that allows to run enterprise software and and, and apply bring your or own device uh, policies on your phones. So. Uh, I just spent two years at Samsung because after two years, I felt that uh, the barrier that put Samsung uh, to me with uh, developing things on my free time uh, was uh, keeping me out of earning more value. So at some point, I talked with my friend and I and. And we finally decided to, that I was going to quit uh, Samsung, and we were going to start a company together. And we were going to try to, to make a living uh, doing applications. So at the end of, uh, at the end of 2014, I, I resigned. And in January, we built and we registered our, our company, a two-guy company. Uh, well, we had a problem at this time. Uh, we were earning about hundreds of euros with our apps, but that money was, wasn't enough to, to people to live on. So for a while, I had to share my time with another two startups 
So while I was developing for Green Lion Soft, I was also working for Glownet. They were, a, well, they are still a company. They are a successful company. They they develop a software for music festivals that run on Android devices and allow people to to enter to a festival with a RFID bracelet and pay and check uh, uh, if they are allowed to enter so so for to a concert, uh, etc. I also worked for a while with at Softimis, well, till the end of Softimis, more than a year. Uh, they were a, a startup that bu built a grocery supermarket app in the UK, but at the end of the 2016, uh, we had to close. So uh, I, I, I also quit Softimis. But, but this time, it was uh, 2017, we were already earning a few thousand euros. So for the very first time, uh, uh, we were able to devote 100 of time to, to ourselves, to our company, to our apps, and get independent. So I would like to share some tips we have learned after 10 years of coding. Uh, we have published uh, more than 20 apps. Today, no, all of them are on the market, just a few of them, because you, you have to experiment to see what works, what doesn't work, and so on. So I will say that uh, you have to focus on a niche. You probably can co compete with big players. For example, you cannot expect to make a Airbnb again, or this kind of apps. Uh, you would rather focus on a specific uh, need for uh, maybe a reduced amount of people, and it will work because uh, big companies are not interested in niche because they are not uh, profitable enough for them, but for, two, for a two-guy company, it's enough. Uh, and I have to say, you, you can publish an app, but you can, cannot expect to get money right away. <coughs> Uh, by our experience, uh, you only get if if the app if the app works, you, you have to wait at least two years to start seeing something uh, a, a stream of revenue that is enough or interesting enough to keep the the application alive, and also the the listing in the in the market in the Google Play Store. Uh, you have to invest on on advertising. For all of our apps, we we still invest. Uh, you don't have to invest a lot of money. Just maybe one or two euros per app a day is enough to keep the 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 application getting installed and, and stay up. Uh, of course, you have to try to automate everything. We are a two-guy company, so we don't have a lot of resources. Uh, we, when we need uh, uh, to do a lot of work, sometimes we, we hire people, freelancers, to help us. But mostly of the time, we are just two people. And we run our code on a continuous integration server. We run tests, etc., publishing, because uh, you are going to save, to save a lot of time, and you need your time to, to keep coding. Of course, modular use your, your, your code. As we are developing a bunch of apps, not just app, just one app, uh, it's important to, to make uh, libraries and share the code and avoid uh, writing the same things again and again. Uh, this one is important. Uh, we are programmers, and we don't have a good taste. <laughs> As you could see in the, the first slide, uh, uh, you have to delegate to professionals. So every time we need to make something new or something uh, that needs a bit more, uh, more than material design, that, that more than plain material design, we, we hire a freelance and, and make a, a wireframe and use a sketch to get uh, the, the interface uh, and make an app. What we have learned also during this, those years is that as, as we just monetize the apps with advertising, that 
uh, banners, banners is what works for us because we don't make games. We, uh, we make kind of utility apps, we make transportation apps, we make a, a application that shows you the current electricity prices, the nest type, the pollution that is going, is go, that is in Madrid, etc. So uh, people don't, don't accept interstitial in these kind of apps. Uh, also, we have been trying a lot of advertising networks, and we have found that there is a problem. As you know, Google is kind of a monopoly of of advertising, and, and if you try other networks, you get more price or better revenues, but many times they don't have enough inventory. Uh, when they, inventory, I mean, you request a banner, and the API responds that th there is no banner to show. So with that mode, you always get ads, but it's the network that pays less. So I would suggest to use uh, me mediation, this kind of uh, networks that use AdMob as a basis, but also get ads from other networks. Uh, with with this structure, you also you always get an ad. Maybe it's not the best ad because it's from Apple, from AdMob and it's cheap, but you uh, you you keep earning money. Um, now it starts the horror part of the of the speak. If you have a company, or you work uh, for a company that makes an app or apps as a business model, uh, you have a problem. At least uh, today we have a, all a problem because uh, you cannot control who is behind Google Play, and you cannot control if if your uh, Google Play account is going to be closed. So uh, last year, I published this, uh, this, this tweet. The Android developers always remember that Google Play may terminate your dev account at any time without pre notice without any explanation, and you may have to close your company and seek for a new tomorrow. This is how it works. Uh, this happened to me in, in Christmas. And I almost had to, to seek for a new job. As a, as a resume. Uh, as you can imagine, everybody at Christmas, uh, at work, uh, don't, don't pass new code, uh, keep features calm, and as an, I'm from Zaragoza, I did the same. So I, at the beginning of December or half December, I decided, well, from now till next year, I'm not going to publish any, any new update. We will, I will keep working, but I want to have a calm Christmas. I don't have to think in bugs. All, all is working and all is stable. And when, otherwise, when I was at my hometown in Zaragoza, uh, I got an email 24th in the morning. Uh, your Google Play account has been closed. And it mentioned it's due to prior violations of our social accounts online in previous emails. And I was like, what? Previous emails, I have no, I have no, it's the first email I got. Uh, uh, my personal account was uh, terminated, my colleague's personal account was terminated, or company account was terminated. So we have no, we have no apps in, at that moment. And at the bottom of the email is wrote, uh, and don't try to make a new, new account, we will close it again. So, <laughs> It's like uh, you, you, you are not going to be able to develop apps in never. Uh, in the same email, it says, if you think it's, it's an error, you can fill this form and ask for an appeal. Because uh, surprisingly, uh, Google Play is one of the only services that doesn't have customer service. Uh, if if ha AppMob has customer service, Google Ads has customer service, you can even Sometimes you can even phone, you sometimes can even meet in person with people from Google to, to help to solve issues, but not for Google Play. So December 25, just exactly 24 hours later, just the same minute, same second, 24 hours later, I got uh, another email, a template email, a canned email, 
that was telling that my appeal was, was, has been re rejected. 25 of December in the morning, it was like, is somebody working today at Google? Uh, so at that moment was like, what, 10 years long under career, totally killed for Christmas. So as you can imagine, uh, I was devastated. I, I, I didn't know what to do. And what is worse, I, I was just moving from Zaragoza to Pamplona. So it was in the, in the worst moment of a personal life that is moving to, to another city. Uh, I had lost my job. Uh, it, I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I remember the, the, the night of the 13th of December. I just woke at 3 a.m. in the morning. I, I couldn't sleep. And, uh, and I thought, wow, I, I, I want to share that. If, uh, I'm going to wrote an open letter. So I woke at 3 a.m. in the morning, and I started to write an article on Medium. And I thought, OK, I'm going to explain what happened to me. Uh, I'm going to address this letter to Parnima Kochikar. He's the responsible of uh, Google Play Division. Google Play Division is like an independent division in, inside Google. And I would say that many people inside Google <laughs> hate that division. <laughs> For example, uh, because they say uh, that Google Play can do whatever they want, and they are not accountable of what they do. And, and I have to say that, 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 that it seems to be true. So I wrote a, that open letter as a way just to release my stress. and. Um, because I, I, I actually I didn't have any other option. So I wrote the letter, and I published it on um, Pro Android in Dev in, in Medium. Uh, and I had the lucky that it somehow uh, got viral. I mean, so kind because maybe 400 uh, likes and 400 uh, retweets is not viral, but in a specific domain like Android in Christmas and it was. Actually, the, the guy that runs the publication in Medium uh, told me that my open letter has been the most written article of all times in, in the publication. And also, the Medium editors contacted me and asked for my permission to publish it on the front page of Medium. Uh, I say yes, of course. <laughs> <I say. laughs> and the very same day of 13, uh, like, 8 p.m. in the evening, uh, I got a phone call from a guy from Google that was in Switzerland. I was like, wow. Uh, so somehow it has worked. Uh, that person told me that uh, he had seen the open letter and that he, he was working for Google as a European Google Dev Relations. And that he had solved uh, same similar cases in the past for for Spanish companies. Actually, he's a uh, Spanish guy, so it was uh, I was really lucky to be able to to describe in Spanish to a person at Google. Uh, so he told me, "Okay, uh, don't worry. I'm going to contact the the people in charge of this kind of reviews. Is in India." And they don't they don't celebrate uh, Christmas, so I think it's gonna be fast. Uh, they are going to answer, so I'm going to request him them uh, more info. So what we got is that our company account uh, hasn't committed any affiliation. Our company account had been associated to my personal account. My personal account hadn't committed any violation either. It, 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 it was terminated because it was associated to a colleague account. What? what? And then my colleague account was terminated due, due to intellectual property and trademark violation. Uh, and my colleague uh, said, oh, yes, uh, uh, they say that in the email, but I made an appeal because, uh, an appeal because I didn't know what was the actual reason. Uh, they, when you make an appeal, they never uh, provide you extra information. Um, so the logic here is that Google will play, want to avoid a bad developer that makes bad things, 
uh, to create a new account and repeat what what he was doing. So uh, somehow Google Play has uh, developed an automatic software that makes association between accounts. And if one account is terminated, all associated accounts uh, at the end get uh, terminated also. Uh, this association, we, 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 I can I can assure that because uh, Google Pay hasn't disclosed that, but by our personal experience, uh, what we can find on the internet, because uh, as you can imagine, I, I search on the internet about similar cases, and there are hundreds of cases. And reasons to, to get associated to another account is just uh, giving access to uh, another Gmail account to your Google Play console that makes an association. If you use the same computer and you log to two different accounts, they are associated. If you happen to use the same case store of signatures to, in, two de in two different uh, Google Play accounts, they also get uh, associated. If you use the same credit card to open the, that account, those accounts also. And even uh, sharing the same Wi-Fi internet, it is said that it may associate the, the, the accounts. In our case, uh, my colleague and me, we, we work in remote, so uh, despite we have a company together, we don't work together. He works at, at his home, and I used to work at uh, co-workings or at home, so, and we have never shared hardware. So the only point in common was that we were sharing access to, to our Google Play accounts. So the review team in India said that the termination was okay, uh, and they were not going to to reinstate it or or account because for them it's like uh, some some somebody did something wrong and and this guy was making uh, new accounts to impersonate the original account and and keep doing bad things, but it was. It was not true because actually our company account was created uh, years before my colleague account, so it was no sense. So what I did is, is I prepared a kind of uh, like a CV, a kind of resume of my life, all my working experience, how we made a company. Uh, I happened to wrote about a book about our experience, so I also attached a copy of our book. To, to the email, uh, explaining that uh, we work it together, but uh, the company account was independent of my colleague account. So we have uh, uh, the, the apps of my colleague have nothing to do with our business work. All these kind of explanations, uh, many times, and, and days days were passing by. So I, I thought that uh, we were ne never going to get back our, our account, but surprisingly, 20 days later, I just got an email, uh, an automatic email, of course, <laughs> saying your account has been restated. Uh, just uh, make a modification on, on the Google Play text code, and sorry, in the Google Play test that uh, describes your app like putting in a space and press a publish button, and then we got our, our, our company account back. Uh, but I have to say that during those 21 days, our ad units were suspended in AdBob. We, lost, we have lost all our Google Play listing position of all our apps, and that our personal accounts remain terminated. When your uh, Gmail account gets terminated. Uh, also, your uh, Google Pay account is terminated. Your uh, Google AppMob account is terminated. And you are not able to use them never again. Um, so, as I as I wrote, you need a plan B. If 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 it does this, if that works like that today, uh, you need a plan B, because your company, maybe one day, uh, one of the developers is going to, to get its, his, its own uh, Google Play account terminated, and that's, that can propagate to, 
to all the company accounts, and, and that's it. Uh, if you look at Reddit, uh, there are many threads on Reddit about companies that I hire a freelancer to make something in our app. That freelancer got the 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 account terminated, and therefore our company account has been terminated. And there is no way to communicate with somebody at Google. Uh, so, as a plan B, I, I thought, well, uh, I need to mo to get more relevance in the Android community, and we need to make this problem visible. Uh, so I, uh, I am speaking and explaining to everybody what happened to us. Uh, I am explaining this in this this conference. Uh, also, I uh, spoke with journalists, and El Diario.es make a, also an article about my case and, and more more cases. Uh, they told me that that was the most written news uh, in, during the weekend for, <laughs> for the newspaper when it got published. So I also, I'm trying to get closer to Google uh, as a way to meet people at Google and uh, meet people that maybe in the future is going to help me to fix that again because I'm not sure if that, ha that can happen again to us. So, for instance, as I just moved to Pamplona recently in January, uh, I have just gone appointed as Google Developer Group organizer. It's not yet officially because I still have to sign an NDA with Google. But for me, it's a way to, to make that problem visible inside Google and, and talk about that. Uh, also, as a countermeasure, we have develop a, an app update infrastructure. What is that? Is the day your, your account gets terminated, all your users can still use the, the app, but they don't know your app has been, your account has been terminated. So they don't know, they are not going to get more updates. So we have developed a system that allows us to, to show a, a toast or whatever, a message inside the app to the existing user to press a button. Uh, we are publishing our APKs also in a S3 Amazon bucket. So if, if somehow they again uh, Google Terminate or, or, or account, we are going to be able to keep updating uh, our apps outside Google Play without losing all these uh, hundreds of thousands of, of users that we are, we are having nowadays. Uh, but that's expensive because I, I made I made some calculations. Uh, just getting all our user base, uh, getting download an APK from S3, is a lot of uh, megas, actually gigas of of data, and that's expensive. So it's like a, a bad solution, but at least a, a solution. While we fix it, or while we decide to to pivot, or whatever. Uh, we are uh, trying to find new, a new business model. We are investing time in bots, Alexa. Actually, last, last week we published our first Alexa app about uh, public trans transportation here in, in Madrid. I, I also look in as, a, as an alternative revenue source, uh, text teaching and writing. Actually, I am... Um, also a tech editor in rightwenderleads.com. Maybe you know it's a, it's a website where you get uh, tutorials about programming, iOS, uh, Android, etc. Or just considering closing and finding a new job. Happily, we are in a sector that uh, finding a job is not really hard, so it's also an option. And that's it. <laughs> Questions? Uh, we still have a, a bit of time, so I also wait a conference because if somebody wants to share a similar experience or whatever.
feel free. Question? I was going to ask before showing your plan B that apart from being tied to the Play Store, you are really tied to AdMob too. Yeah, are, but uh, uh, you can update the 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 app and and use and other uh, app platforms, or even uh, w yes, yes. You, there are a lot of uh, advertising networks. Maybe you are not going to get as much as money as with as a basis, but mm. or a plan B is also uh, you can create a new isolated developer account and try to to publish again the apps but with a different signature or with a different yeah, and it's, and but it's not feasible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. Okay, thank you. So from what I understood you should never uh, share your access to to the Google console. Should, right, uh, right. Yeah, that's, the, that's the point. Do you think it's a better strategy to to pay for a G Apps uh, company account and make some professional accounts for your coworkers, so you never associate uh, with their personal accounts, or w will it be associated with their personal account as well? We yeah. can't. We can't know. I don't know. I actually, if uh, Google Play hasn't disclosed that, uh, there is a Reddit thread where, where uh, supposedly uh, the author uh, says that he worked at Google as a stagiar uh, for a while after finishing their degree, and he he explains that there is a tool inside uh, Google that that does this association, but there is no official information about that. But uh, for example, this week uh, I got uh, after writing this open letter, I got uh, hundreds of of emails every month of people uh, suffering the same. And last week, uh, a guy from a Spanish guy, a Spanish freelancer, told me I have uh, my professional account and I have a customer that that uh, asked me for an app uh, many years ago. I did I make this app. And the customer has not updated the app. Uh, nowadays, if you don't update your apps, your account can be terminated. So the customer uh, account has been terminated, and and suddenly his professional account also. It's, it's incredible. And actually, I wrote a tweet, and because he, uh, everybody that has the problem, I, I, I tell everybody, uh, write on Medium, explaining your case, because it's the only way to make it visible. And I wrote to Google Play at Twitter, uh, hi, Google Play, meet Manuel, uh, another guy that has lost his account. And I put a link to the Medium article, and the Google Play answered me the first time in my life that <laughs> and told me, uh, thank you, Pablo. We are going to pass it to the internal team to review that. And then <laughs> they wrote a tweet, a uh, yes, a tweet to, to, to Manuel uh, and saying, we have already answered you by email. Uh, your appeal has been rejected. <laughs> and that was <laughs> <laughs> So that has been the review. Uh, actually, thank I you. think it's a problem of resources. They, they, they cannot review all all the accounts, or I don't know, and they, are, they have auto automated that, and, and they have a problem, they, they have a terrible problem. And there is also a Reddit thread uh, that says that some people this year at the Google I.O. are planning to wear t-shirts saying, or protesting against uh, banning policies in Google Play, and we are encouraging people to ask in the Google I.O. about the association stuff and how it works and why it's happening. How it works, uh, don't be a bill or something like that. <laughs> um, Google is now uh, promoting a lot of progressive web apps. Yeah. My question is, do you think that maybe in the future it can be a, a plan B for us mm. to... No, because nowadays uh, progressive web apps 
have to be published on Google Play. So. Because they can be installed via the website. Mm, well, you can upload your APKs to or your or your progressive apps to your own site, but as you can imagine. Uh, in the past, we were used to get software from websites, but nowadays, people is not used to get software besides uh, a Play Store. Hello, Lawrence. Okay, well, thank you, Pablo. Thank you.